Hey guys, in this video I want to talk about helmets. Some years ago I made a video called Special Forces Helmet Upgrade. There, there I have shown the painting of the helmet and how I attach different things to the helmet. In this video I want to cover more like why are these things needed or why do I attach them to the helmet. Of course there's no universal solution. Some guys don't wear helmets, there are different kinds of helmets which I will cover in a second and some things work for one guy but not for the other guy and so on. But now let's start. At first, why do you need a helmet? A helmet mainly protects your head from impacts. For example, helmets like these called bump helmets, they have no ballistic protection. So they are just to protect your head from bumping against concrete or from falling. These helmets, for example, from Team Wendy, this one is certified for climbing. So when you take a fall on a climb, your head will not be injured. This one is by Opscore. It's also a bump helmet, the carbon version with um, inserts from Hexonia and with these inserts it's also certified for climbing. So especially here in Germany certification is really a thing. So this is important for us here in Germany. I'm not sure how it's in the States but in Germany certification is super important sometimes. Yeah you already see there are different rails on them but I will cover this later. Now, ballistic helmets mostly protect you from fragments flying th through the air or even from pistol rounds. This, for example, is a ballistic helmet from Protection Group Denmark. Most standard army helmets have more coverage above the ears or over the ears. These helmets of this shape are called half-cut helmets because they are like half-cut. Yes, you have less protection on the sides, but as I said before, it mainly protects you from, yeah, of course, impacts and also from shrapnels flying through the air and maybe pistol rounds. There are some cases where soldiers' life have been saved because the bullet of a sniper rifle on long distance didn't run through, so the guy is still alive. Of course, there's a lot of force going on and into your neck, but this all also depends on the kind of the helmet, how it's made, and there are also different classes of protection against bullets or whatever. Yeah, this is like a naked helmet, so no rails, no uh, shroud for NVGs, so it's lighter. Basically, when you need some ballistic protection and also protection against uh, impacts on concrete or whatever, this will do a really good job. And from this you have the base where you can add up. So here, yeah. for example, last time I have shown a helmet like this from HCS and there I added arc rails, which are basically rails. They can be attached to the helmet and with these rails you can attach accessories to the helmet. Yeah, now what accessories do you need or what accessories are used? I don't want to tell you anything that you really need it and you need to buy it or whatever. But in the army usually you are shooting, there are explosions and so on. So you will need hearing protection. For your hearing there are all these old school uh, plugs for your ears. So you uh, touch them, put them in your ear and then your ear is just like closed and you hear very bad. But when there's something loud it protects your hearing. But not really practical if you still want to be able to recognize the surroundings and to be able to hear. So then there are also like uh, impulse ear protection. Sorry, I'm not sure how it's called. But in this case from 3M, these react on impulses, but only mechanical. So you also place them in your ear almost like the other ones. But when there is an impulse, they will shut down and this way they will protect your hearing. Good things about these in-ear plugs is that they are not that hot. And you will not need a special helmet or whatever. But you put things in your ear, so if you have dirty hands, it can come in your ear and so on. So these things can also be annoying, but when it's super hot, sometimes I prefer them. Now when it comes to 
communication. Often radios are used and for this you will need a headset. You can use like a standard Bowman and you can use this in-ear hearing protection underneath it. But now there comes the active hearing protection. Most classic ones or most used ones are, in my opinion, Paltor and MSR Sordin or Sordin. These are with electricity, so you have batteries in them and they basically have a microphone and inside there is a speaker. And when there is like a peak, like from a shooting or from an explosion, it cuts down this peak and this way it will not be transferred through the speaker to your ear. These can even be combined with in-ear protection if you're shooting like really loud things, like a Panzerfaust for example, or if you do like breaching. They can also be combined with headsets, like on this model you already have a microphone and plugs for your PTT attached so you can talk on the radio and have hearing protection at the same time. So this is really important thing you have to consider. Okay, you already have seen they look different. Especially on the Paltors, you have a really thin low profile thing over your head. So this will fit under most helmets. When you have a normal helmet, these fit underneath the helmet most of the time, but this can be too thick. And for example, the Sardine is a bit more low profile here, but not on this thing over your head. So this can fit better, but it also depends on how your head is and how the helmet is you're wearing. So now, basically, I want to show you what you can do with this. Good thing is when you're shooting and you don't need a helmet or you're walking around and want to take your helmet off because it's more like friendly, then <coughs> this is the way to go. You can wear it without a helmet or if you have a good helmet that fits um, over this, you can just place the helmet on top and then you have the protection of the helmet and also your hearing protection. Okay, now there are things moving in the air, like small splitters or whatever, so you want to protect your eyes also. For this, there are different glasses you can use in this example from Oakley. And these sides are really low profile. This is important when you want to be able to wear them underneath hearing protection, because the hearing protection will press on them and if you have a thick side this can be annoying. So now our friend Friedrich here has got good protection without having any fancy things on the helmet. Yes. Now there are some arguments for adding things to the helmet. For example, it can be more comfortable if you attach things to the helmet. For this you will need like the rails or even the shroud for the night vision device. Talking about night vision, I'm not going deep into night vision, but there are shrouds that can be attached to a helmet just with a sling. Uh, sadly, this one broke. There is a tensioning device. It broke after like four years of use. So now I cannot use this anymore. But with this, you can attach the shroud to the helmet without the need of a hole. But usually when they get tested and certified, they also test how the helmet reacts on a bullet that strikes directly on the screw. So even with the hole, these helmets are safe. Okay. It can be practical to attach the hearing protection directly to the helmet. For example, it's a lot faster to sit it on your head and it can be also more comfortable. So now let's attach to the helmet. For this, on the helmet you need this arc rails. Here on Protection Group Denmark they don't have the original arc rail, so when I slide this on or if I want to slide this on, it doesn't fit. So they deliver an adapter for this. The original 3M arc rail adapters fit like that on the helmet. You can see it just holds onto the arc rail with friction. So it's easy to adjust, easy to take off, 
but you can also lose it. So some guys don't like that. And now with the adapter from Protection Group Denmark, it slides into the rail itself and not on top. And now it's a bit harder to push. So it's basically stronger and here is still the original 3M arc rail adapter attached and this one has got the possibility that you can clip it open so it doesn't push on your ears with the hearing protection so it's basically not protecting you but you can still use the headset and you can still hear what someone is saying to you and you can push it to place it back on your ear. Yeah, the advantage is when you are walking around at night and you really want to be able to hear like normal, then you can deactivate this. You can also air to your ears. And as soon as you think you will need a hearing protection, you can push down and your ears are protected. The big disadvantage is when you are jumping around, moving really fast, or when you do preaching, they can pop open by themselves or accidentally. So there are the possibilities to modify this one, so they are always pushed on your ears, or you use different ones. Now with these adapters from Unity Tactical, they are attached to the helmet with screws, so you can tighten them down and they will not slide off. Right now I did not really tighten them, so I am able to slide them on just with friction. And they also sit in, in the arc rail, so really inside the big roof. And now if I want I can tighten them down so they sit on the arc rail really securely and will not come off. Also, the difference is they push on the ears all the time. So I can not push them open. They always push on the ears. So it doesn't matter how strong you move, how much you move or fast, they will always stay on your ears. So really secure solution to always protect your ears. As you can see, here I have the sardines on them and Unity Tactical also offers these adapters. With them you can remove the standard thing from the hearing protection and attach them to this wire. And with this you can also attach them original Pelto adapters. You just have to remove these plastic things and then you can use these adapters. Yeah, so that's it with the hearing protection on the helmet. For your eyes, you can also use goggles that can be attached to the helmet. Like these ones, these are my old Oli X800. They can be attached to the sides of the arc rail, where you can also attach the oxygen mask. But I don't really like to attach the goggles to my helmet anymore. But the advantage is you don't have things on the side that are underneath the hearing protection. So you have no pressure points here. So this can be an advantage and also as soon as you put your helmet on, you have everything on it. Yeah, I basically prefer these ones because when you take your helmet off or you are sh shooting and you don't need the helmet, then I can wear them standalone. So now we covered the protection for your head, the protection for your hearing and the protection for your eyes. So it's all about protection. Yes. Now there are other things that you could need. That's basically the vision. <laughs> so for the night you will need night vision possibly. And yeah, on most helmets like on this one from Protection Group Denmark, you can just attach the mount for your night vision. And here you go, you have your night vision. For vision with your naked eye, of course you need a headlamp. Most headlamps come with elastic to just place them around your head. 
but with a helmet that's annoying and doesn't always work, especially if, if you have other things on the helmet. For this you can use plastic adapters if they fit inside the rail and you can build something yourself. Or what I prefer in this case for my streamlight is like a clamp which I can place on the helmet, then I tighten the screws and then there I can attach my headlamp which does also have infrared light and I can even use it to help me with the night vision device when something is pitch black. I can move it around freely. There are also headlamps that will attach directly to the arc rail or somewhere else. There are even some lights that attach to the shroud of the night vision, but I don't really like that. So now we also covered the vision. It's really important. Of course, often you will also have a light on your weapon, but a light on your head is often really helpful when you're doing like preparing something with both hands because then you cannot really use your weapon light. Vision is one thing, but being seen and identified by your comrades is also important. So for this you can use like a beacon. This is basically a infrared flashing light. So it flashes in infrared and when your comrades have got night vision devices they will see the flashing light and are able to tell that you are there. Sometimes they can be handy, sometimes they just do the opposite because if the enemy has got night vision device they will also be able to see this blinking light. So for identification there are also these infrared reflecting patch or this one it's a glow in the dark patch so when you are in the dark forest or in a dark building you can see the comrade in front of you. Really helpful thing. What I really like are call sign patches. So they also are glow in the dark in most cases and when everyone has got one of these on his backside, you are able to call everyone from the backside. So you don't have to say, hey you, hey you, on this tree. You just say two, three, and he knows, ah, okay, yeah, you mean that guy. <laughs> now, the next thing, cameras. Cameras can be important, but for other guys, they are not important. For Police officers in today's times, they are often really crucial because they wear them and they record everything. So later in the lawsuit, you can see what happened. And also in the internet, you can see a lot of footage from body cams that just show what happened. Yeah, can be helpful. But also for military, it can be cool for training because you can record what's happening. And later after the training, you can see this and go through what happened step by step. So this is a really cool tool for training. Now here I have a classic GoPro and also an old school contour. And the main difference of these cameras is one is attached on the side with a self-made Velcro adapter from myself. And with this you can still use the night vision device, my headlamp, everything because it's on the side. The GoPro often is used with an adapter for the night vision shroud and then it sits here and I cannot use the night vision anymore because now the shroud is taken by the GoPro. But this can also be good for some things, but this is why I prefer the contour over the GoPro for tactical applications. When doing like climbing and so on, I mainly use the GoPro because it's the versatility and the high quality. Of course, with these arc rails and velcro and so on, you can attach a lot of things to your helmet. But this is not needed for everyone. So try to figure out what you need and what is practical for you and then use it how you want it. This video is just an impression of what you can do and what my experience is with all these things. So that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to check the description for the links to different companies and also subscribe and like if you like and i'm looking forward to be watched by you again bye